Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Intuitive Angling, where I think, my personal opinion, you get more hardcore hogging tips than any YouTube channel out there. I uh, much appreciate you guys watching the video. Welcome back all the regulars. Welcome back all the uh, sensitive types that get been out of shape. If I say something they don't like, uh, everybody's welcome here on the channel. Today, what we're gonna talk about is um, it's sort of a topic that comes up more and more every year bass fishing, and that is how to catch heavily pressured bass, because it just seems like guys, most all of our bass anymore heavily pressured i you know it, it was bad before covid but after covid hit it 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 it, it knocked it up to a, a, the next level that i didn't think we were going to see for 30 or 40 years the fishing pressure is relentless on public waters around the country i mean it's just absolutely ridiculous especially on the lakes that are more are well more known and have a lot of tournaments on them so I think one of the realities in fishing is that you have got to be able to adapt to catch those bass that are heavily pressured. Now there are certain times of year that they're more heavily pressured than others. Some of the prime season time, prime times of the year that people fish. Um, so there's little windows where the fish, you know, get a little bit wary. We're gonna do some videos at a later point on how to catch skittish bass and all that type of stuff and how to keep, keep from spooking bass. But today I'm gonna share with you guys some things you can do to catch super heavily pressured fish in the lakes that you fish. It's gonna definitely help you get some bites behind people or if you're fishing around people or behind people. So I'm gonna go with you guys. I've got really um, three different techniques that I'm gonna talk to you, three different baits here. I'm gonna walk you through them and sort of let you know when I fish them. First of all, every one of these baits that I'm talking about, they will work in a variety of conditions and a variety of water clarities and for the most part a lot of these things that i'm going to talk about here they're more like rock oriented or wood oriented they're not really meant for grass techniques we can do that at a later point but this is like a you know for typical man-made impoundments we'll go to here but i got anyway i got three of them i want to go over with you guys and show it so first of all you have to ask yourself you know when when do you need to downsize to this these are small little tidbits i'm going to show you but when do you need to downsize and there's a couple different things there that could be um, it could be tough fishing conditions like bright skies, not much wind, you know, post frontal conditions. It could be on a weekend where there's a lot of boats on the water, a lot of recreational boats. The fish are just shutting down a little bit. These will work in a variety of conditions. You just have to change the colors a little bit. So the first one I'm going to talk about is the jig head craw. Now we talked about this last year a little bit, but guys, this little tidbit right here will catch them. I promise you, it'll catch the most pressured fish in the lake. What I do is, um, uh, this is a zoom little critter crawl that I've not that I've modified down. You can see what I've done. All I've done on this thing is I've taken the appendages off, I've, I've took the tentacles off, and I and I bit it in two, in order to make it this little downsized tidbit. And I've got it on a one sixteenth of an ounce Ned head, like that. So it looks sort of like that little, little crawl imitator. Guys, this will catch them in so many different conditions. If you're fishing water visibility is anywhere between 12 inches to 12 feet. This thing will catch them. Um, my favorite is just a straight green pumpkin. If the water's got a little bit of color to it, like it's closer to that two foot visibility, I'll put some, I'll dye the, the tail chartreuse on it. That works real, I've caught them up, you know, into 12, 12 inches of visibility before, but most of the time I sort of like that visibility, but it's like between two to five feet, this is really good. One thing that I have found about this is the head size on it, based upon the water clarity, the dirtier the water, the lighter I go to. If the water's dirty, I want a real slow fall because I'm usually fishing shallower. If the water's really clear, I may go up to a little bit, up to like maybe an eighth ounce. I don't like to go to above an eighth ounce uh, if the water's real clear, if I'm fishing a little bit deeper. Using it all the time on six pound test line. Just fishing it around whatever, points, docks, rocky banks, wherever you think there's going to bass, uh, there's going to be bass, but this will catch a good fish. It catches good smallmouth, spotted bass, and largemouth. It will get you bit for sure. Now the next one here, this is sort of a similar, this is an old jig head worm setup. I've got a mega bass Okashira jig head on there. This is an, this is a, a 16th ounce head. This is, a, this is a zoom trick worm, or excuse me, a zoom finesse worm watermelon that I had bit down to, it's like two and a half inches long. And I rig it on a, on just the open hook jig head. And the bass don't see this much anymore. A lot of the bass, other than like a Ned rig or something like, I guess this is sort of like a skinny Ned rig. 
But this is a little edible tidbit right here. It's a small diameter worm, a little bit different presentation. This right here is definitely gonna be working better in your cleaner water conditions. Water visibility is of over three feet, preferably four to six foot. And you know, the thing, the places I like to fish this are on lakes where you've got a mixed species. If you've got a lake like, you know, Lake Lanier in Georgia, any of the East Tennessee lakes, the Ozark lakes, or there's, where there's spotted bass, smallmouth and largemouth, this is a deadly technique here, fishing it around gravelly banks, points, again, on six pound test line, it will get you bit in the most heavy fishing pressure or lakes that you can find. And the third one here, and this is something, again, a lot of people think a wacky rig is sort of like a spawn type deal. Guys, wacky rigs will catch them all year long, all over the place. What I like to do, this is a diminutive wacky rig. I've got a one aught Gamagatsu straight shank worm hook wire. This is a just a four and a half inch zoom finesse worm. Most people use a Cinco. This thing has got a super light fall on it. And I'll, I can, I'll catch fish on this thing and again, Dirty water, stained water, clear water. One of my favorite things to do with it is skip it up under boat docks in the summer, around shallow trees. Um, if I'm fishing it, it's it's surprisingly weedless too. I mean, you think even with that open hook, you're gonna get hung up a lot, but unless you're throwing it in the brush or something like that, it's really weedless. But this thing is really good um, if you have to slow down like a snail. Say if, say if you're fishing a lake that's got boats all around you and you just don't have many places to move, you can take this uh, this wacky rig finesse worm and you can just set down on places where you feel there's bass at and almost fish it like live bait. I throw it out there, let it hit to the bottom and just barely work it back. I'm, I'm talking just barely move it across the bottom. I'm not trying to hop it. I'm just sort of trying to drag it across the bottom like a finesse rig. And it's something that looks real, it's edible. I also put a lot of scent on it because they get down and steady it. But anyway, guys, those three things right there, I can promise you, if you give them a try, they're gonna get you bites in the most heavily fished, fished water that you're gonna fish in. The little jig head worm setup, little, uh, the little cross setup that we talked about, and the uh, finesse wacky rig. Those are, those are the three lures that will get you um, more bites in tough fishing situations than about anything that you can throw. So anyway, I hope, hope it helps you guys uh, catch some more fish. Um, nobody likes fishing and heavy fishing pressure. To me, it's like the worst thing, the worst thing I like to do, but sometimes we got to do it. So again, guys, thanks for tuning in and, and please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button. That's a great way to support the channel and much appreciated here. Talk to you later.